Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Nathan sent me a story apparently about the school he attended. So it's a headline from WCCO Television. Mitchell Hamlin accepts incarcerated person to law program. Mitchell Hamlin is a school. It is a law school. They have a law school there. And they've accepted someone into their law program who is in prison. Now, in the old days, law school was mandatory in-person learning. When I went to law school, they didn't have online learning. We had the internet, uh, almost. <laughs> the internet was coming. <laughs> but, but you had to be there. You had to be in class. There had to be mandatory physical attendance to get the credits necessary. So the question is, if you are in prison, how do you get your law degree? And then the next question is, what do you do with it? So uh, when classes begin at Mitchell Hamlin School of Law this fall, the incoming class will include a woman who is currently incarcerated. She'll be the first incarcerated person to ever enroll in an American Bar Association approved law school in the U.S., according to a release from Mitchell Hamlin. Now, here's the deal. You can get admitted to law school. You can attend law school and get your law degree. That does not guarantee that you can become a lawyer, though, because to become a lawyer, you still have to get, you know, admitted to a bar. And to do that, you got to pass the bar and also character and fitness. However, some people do get law degrees knowing they can't practice law. So that's not necessarily a deal breaker here. The law school made the announcement a couple days ago saying the school intends to enroll more incarcerated people in the coming years. Uh, I didn't know this was that big of a market, but apparently it is. The woman here learned she's accepted just a few days ago when the president of Mitchell Hamlin uh, visited her at Minnesota Correctional Facility to share the news. The school says her tuition is going to be paid by private fundraising and scholarship assistance. So she gets some scholarship assistance, but the rest be private fundraising. She will attend classes entirely online. Now, <laughs> I think we could have guessed that, but I suppose you got to put that in there for people who are going to ask. This comes after the ABA granted Hamlin permission to allow qualified incarcerated people to enroll in its law program. The school also says they are now able to admit up to two incarcerated students each year. So apparently they had to seek permission from the ABA to do that, to keep their ABA accreditation in line. And the ABA said, go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Hamlin says the effort is almost three years in the making. The university collaborated with the Legal Revolution, a nonprofit that aims to educate incarcerated people across Minnesota. According to state records, the woman here was convicted of first degree premeditated murder back in 2014. She was sentenced to life in prison and could serve up to 40 years. And of course, every state's different on how they calculate these things. Uh, so whether she can get out or not is unclear. And so you might ask yourself, why would she get the law degree then? Why would she get it? Well, a couple things, but let me back up one step before that. As you know, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, I'm a big supporter of education. A lot of the t-shirts I wear are for schools. I've told people that one of the things that I like to promote the most is education. Uh, obviously, I went to college. I went to law school. My father was an educator. My mother was an educator. My grandfather was a dean of a college. My grandmother was a teacher. So there's all kinds of educators in my family, and I've always held education uh, in high esteem. I, I personally think that uh, as you go through life, if you get an education of any sort, and I'm not talking about just sitting in a classroom getting like a liberal arts degree, okay? There's all kinds of education. You can go to trade school. You can, you can learn a trade as an apprentice, okay? Any education you get, any learning you get, will benefit you because you learn something and you take that learning with you through life. It changes how you see the world. It changes what you can accomplish. It helps you accomplish more and it might make your life easier if, you, if you've gotten a good education of some sort. So the fact that this woman is in prison and wants to get a higher education, I assume to get into law school, she must have had an undergraduate degree because that is almost always a requirement of some sort. And she probably had to do some other things to convince them that she was a worthy candidate because it says here that they could take other people also. And so even if you said, Steve, someone who's in solitary confinement for the rest of their years wants an education, should they be able to get it? If it can be done 
in a way that won't burden taxpayers? I say right, go right ahead. Absolutely. If they want to better themselves, let them. Education ain't going to hurt them. It's going to help them. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of that. But I have to imagine that someone who is in prison and is working on a law degree and gets a law degree, whether or not they can get admitted to a bar association is not really the point. Because while in prison, you may know this, a lot of people work on their own appeals while they're in prison. Timothy Masters spent 10 years in prison. The bulk of that time he spent researching and writing appellate briefs, which eventually helped him get out of prison. And he spent time in the law library of the prison, which I have to imagine is about a shelf that size. But a lot of, a lot of prisoners are doing that. Likewise, there are prisoners who would like to know more about their situation while they're in prison, but they can't because they either can't read that well or they don't know where to begin. And so someone who has a legal education in prison might be able to help fellow inmates. I have heard of people who've gone to prison before, been sent there for many years, and they had some ability to teach. They knew a subject well enough to teach it, or they were a professor or something before they went to prison, or they were an attorney, okay? And once they go to prison, somebody says, hey, this person here has got knowledge and they're willing to teach other people. Maybe we can do something with that. So it very well could be that this woman here gets her law degree and can simply help other prisoners do research on their own situations uh, or prepare their cases or whatever they're going to do. Uh, and like I said, it could just be for her to better herself. And if she gets out of prison 40 years from now, uh, it might be that she can then seek admission to a bar. Um, a lot of bar... Uh, state bars, uh, when people seek admission, uh, they ask for character and fitness, and that's where they look into your background to find out if you are a worthy candidate or there's something in your background that might disqualify you. And I've known people who went to law school suspecting that they were not going to pass character and fitness. And so the question is, if you had a uh, record like this, would that stop you from being admitted to a state bar association? there's a good chance it would. But of course, if she gets the law degree now and spends the next few decades helping people uh, and then she gets out of prison, then she might be able to say, hey, look, I, I got the law degree a while back. I've been helping people ever since. I'm out now just to have one bad mark on my record. It's a serious mark, of course, but there you go. Uh, uh, many people are going to say, Steve, if she's in prison with a law degree and she's helping other people, is she practicing law without a license? Well, there's a fine line there, and she'd have to avoid any situation that would look like that. But I think the standards would be lowered in prison because people in prison, many of them who don't have any legal representation, cannot afford it, and it's not being provided to them anymore because they've been convicted. You know, if she's giving them advice, uh, I suspect that it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But I'm not saying she should do that. I'm simply speculating as to what could happen in the future. So I think this is a, a good news story um, in that as a woman in prison and instead of rotting away, plotting her revenge, she's applied to and been accepted to law school and wants to get a law degree while she's behind bars. So Nathan, thanks for sending it. Like I said, I think it's a good story. We'll have to see what happens. Mitchell Hamlin, it's a school accepts incarcerated person to law program. She is the first in the country, according to the ABA. And it looks like there might be more of this in the future because people can now attend these classes online, which was not possible not so long ago. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life has no limitations except the ones you make.